So this is a review of what I think are the best broadheads out there that I can afford and that I am going to shoot going forward. So from left to right, we have a Tough Head Classic 300, a Grizzly, I believe it's a 235 Kodiak, a RMS Gear Cutthroat in 160, a Grizzly uh, in 185, the regular Grizzly, and finally the Tough Head Meathead in 190. The reason I chose these, I started shooting single bevel uh, probably seven, eight years ago and exclusively in 2016. The reason I started shooting single bevel exclusively is because of an experience I had with a truly mature uh, monster buck that I bounced an arrow off of. The arrow weighed approximately 675 grains. I was shooting a Magnus 1 four blade and the buck was slightly quartering two. I aimed right for the shoulder blade. I hit right where I aimed and the arrow bounced out. After that day, I never went back to anything but single bevel grizzlies. Now this year in 2021, I am going to be hunting with the tough heads uh, a lot more and to see what they do. But I wanted to do a, a cold eye side by side comparison just based on my experiences and my opinions of what I want in a broadhead. Uh, my experience and my opinions are based exactly on that. My experience and my opinions. Does not mean it's right. Does not mean it's wrong. It just means this is what I take away from it. Uh, you could take my experience and my opinions, add about $3 and get yourself a cup of coffee because that's about what it's worth. But Anyway, I wanted to do this because there's nothing out there like this that I've seen. I've researched it. So I'm a broadhead geek, and these are the broadheads I'm going to shoot. Let's start with the Tough Head 300. This is a two-piece welded broadhead that comes extremely sharp out of the package. When I say extremely sharp, I mean hunting sharp. It has a very wide bevel, as you can see there. Uh, the things I like about the Tough Head and the Tough Head Classic the ferrule extends from the base of the broadhead all the way to the tip, which provides strength. Uh, it is, is coated, I believe it's called creocoat coating. I'll look at the packaging here. Um, but it is coated. Uh, the coating will prevent rust. And it's also, uh, I, think it's, I think it makes the broadhead slick too. Uh, the other benefit of the tough head, on all tough heads, is the ferrule size. Uh, the ferrule will f is 2364s, tapers down, but the great thing about tough head broadheads is they will fit over your arrow, over your, the end of your shaft very well, and I'll show, I'll show you that mounted compared to a Grizzly later. So that's the tough head 300. That is in the left bell. That's all uh, they had at the time, and I do have these set up, ready to go, ready to hunt. Uh, but I do like the tough head. I do like the Tough Head Broadheads. For the money, a couple of things. They come sharp out of the pack. They're not cheap, okay? These were 20, after I had a sheet. Uh, I'll show you the breakdown. But these were $22, $23 a piece. 66 bucks for three, roughly, without shipping uh, when I bought them. So not cheap, but they're not the most expensive. Uh, tough Head's made in the USA. Tough Head has a lifetime warranty. Uh, the blade thickness is... 0 0.080 and they have a very high mechanical advantage so uh, these are definitely a head that is designed to penetrate and designed to be tough uh, but it is a two-piece head it is welded there so it is there is a weak point there but I doubt you'll ever realize it uh, very finished ready to hunt brought it out of the package no work needed done there the next head I have is the heaviest Grizzly Kodiak you can buy, and it's the 235. Again, I have lots of experience with Grizzly heads. I'm very biased towards Grizzly heads. The thing I like about Grizzly heads, these are the most expensive Grizzly head you can buy, and they're less than $9 a piece. Okay, They are by far the cheapest head uh, on the market. They're also made in the USA. They do not come hunt ready, so the only head in this they do not come hunt ready. Now, they do have 
as you can see, Grizzly has improved the grind a lot over the years. And that is one of the best grinds I've seen on a Grizzly head. It would not take much to get that sharp. Uh, you could probably hone that and get it pretty close. Uh, they did a great job on the grind on these. But I love Grizzly heads. They're the same type of construction as Tough Head. They're a two-piece welded broadhead. Um, and they do have the Tonto tip. As the, I'll compare the tips here. So, so you see the difference in the tips. The tough head is a little bit wider than the Grizzly. Uh, one thing to caution about the Grizzly, as you sharpen these, and, I, and I've and i used these, I've killed many, many animals with, with the same broadhead with no issue. But over time, when you sharpen these, it will start to round that head out, and you have to kind of file that head back down, which is easy to do. So Grizzlies, for, for less than 9 bucks a head compared to 23 and some change, um, it's hard to beat. Now, uh, the ferrule is not 2364, so it will not fit. There's the size comparison on the ferrules. It will not fit over the end of your arrow like a tough head will. Never had a problem with it, though. Um, and again, the ferrule does not extend to the tip, as does the tough head. Uh, but, uh, and they're a little more, you're going to have to do some work out of the pack to get them sharp. Whereas the tough heads are razor sharp out of the pack. And I didn't mean razor sharp. But the Grizzlies, I have breached heavy bone with these. I have uh, got great blood trails with these. Another thing to, to watch out for in the Grizzlies, if you run your fingernail down, I take a file and file all these little, uh, it's kind of like a little ridge um, on the ferrule. Doesn't take much to do. You knock that ridge off and you're fine. Uh, again, Grizzlies are coated as well. I think these are Teflon coating. Um, they will wear off over time. Again, I, I, I've shot grizzlies into many animals for many years. Never had one issue. Great head for the money. Uh, that's that's the 225 compared to the uh, 300 grain grizzly. And the, I'm sorry, 300 grain tough head. And tough head does make a 225. Uh, that is that is about the same size. I've got some of those, but I'm not going to review them today. Um, but that's the that's the latest. That's the latest and greatest Grizzly Kodiak. It's a little bit wider uh, compared to the, the, the regular Grizzly. You can see the base is a lot wider. It's a little bit longer. It's got a higher MA. Uh, it's got a high MA uh, compared to the com compared to any other head. It's a little bit wider at the base than a, than a Tough Head 300. That's a Grizzly 235. Great head. Next, now this is a new head. Uh, this is the most expensive head out of the bunch. This is my first look at these. These are RMS gear. Cutthroats. They've been around a while. The prices went up on these. Um, I think these are $24. They're $70. I want to say $72 for three, $24 uh, a head. A uh, couple things on these heads. This is this is a 160. What I like about this head, number one, it comes with a very consistent grind. It is not sharp out of the pack. However, if you look at the bevel grind, you could see they did a great job raising the burr. So it would not take much. I have not sharpened these yet, but you knock that burr off, you hone the back end, that thing's going to be razor sharp. So I like that. I like the wide bevel. Um, I really like that. You can see it's a monolith head, meaning it's a one-piece head. It's not welded like the tough heads where here's a 185 grain grizzly. It's not welded. It's a one-piece head. Um, what I don't like about the head it's a short stubby head, so so it's a little bit lower MA than say the Grizzly Kodiak, uh, 185. Uh, but what it makes up for in MA, what it lacks in MA, it makes up for I think in number one, it's a monolith design, I meaning it's one piece, it's machined one piece of steel, um, and they do a great job, very consistent bevel grind there. What I don't like about this head, the other thing I don't like, is this little ridge right here. Um, I'm sure that by removing metal here, you keep metal on the bevel, which is where you want metal on a single bevel head, because as these heads rotate through bone, that bevel is the weak point. That bevel, sometimes a bevel can chip, and I have seen it happen with grizzlies where uh, going through heavy bone, that, that metal will chatter. Uh, but this, this head is, and I don't show what the thickness are on these. I've got the package here. It doesn't say, um, but it's, it's, you can see that's a very sturdy bevel, very wide bevel. 
don't like don't like the cut out there that's a to me that's taken away some of your mechanical advantage something to catch if you will but I, I don't know how much difference it would make and you compare these to say a, a, a grizzly you could see the, the tonto tip it's a, a big wide tonto tip um, and the feral diameter looks about the same maybe a little bit wider than the grizzly I haven't mounted these yet so these are a 160 they make a 160 I think they make a 200 uh, where you're going to get the real benefit of the monolith design is when if you use screw and broadhead uh, because of the post and, and it makes it stronger um, very very expensive head here relative to the others even more expensive this most expensive head uh, we're going to review today but for five dollars more for three they will make this thing razor sharp so um, lifetime warranty made in the USA again the real benefit of this head is monolith it's one piece of metal there's no weak points here um, the ferrule does not go to the tip. I don't think you need it. They left the metal in the tip, which is great. Again, they took the metal out here, I think, to be able to add or keep keep the weight at low and add keep the metal on the edge, which is a great design. So that is the Cutthroat uh, 160, uh, twenty four dollars a head there. So the next the next head we're going to look at. This is a Grizzly. This is not a Kodiak. Whereas this is a Kodiak, this is a Grizzly. So you see the difference, 185, 285. The Kodiak difference is it's wider. It's longer and wider than a Grizzly. So the thing about Grizzlies are the more weight you have in the head, the thicker and the more sturdy the broadhead is going to be. Um, so you can get a 125 Grizzly. It's going to be the same dimensions as a 185 Grizzly, but it's going to be thinner metal. It's going to be a little bit thinner construction. It's going to be a little more dainty. However, I have taken a 125 grain Grizzly and shot it through heavy bone, split heavy bone, no problem. I've also taken 200 grain Kodiaks and shot into heavy bone with no problem. Uh, these are tough heads. These are these are uh, these heads hold up. Uh, you see the 185 has you see it has a little bit wider bevel here. This is an older one compared to the new grind. Um, the new grind looks a little more consistent, but 185, again, it's a two-piece head. They weld them together. I'm not sure if Grizzly has a lifetime warranty or not, but uh, I've never needed one. I've never hurt one. I, again, I've shot a lot of stuff with Grizzlies. I've shot them into trees. I've shot them into bones. I've got some great blood trails with Grizzly heads. They're easy to sharpen. I use a KME sharper on these, but that's the Grizzly compared to... There's a Grizzly compared to a Cutthroat. Grizzly compared to a 300 grain tough head. And finally, what I will be hunting with and have hunted with this year is the meat head. The meat head by tough head is a carbon steel head, whereas the uh, other tough head, the 225 and 300, is a stainless steel head. What does that matter? Well, for me, carbon steel is a little bit easier to sharpen than stainless steel. Um, so the thing about the tough head, this is the 190 and here's the 225. A grizzly or 235. Here's the 185 to, uh, grizzly, the, the closest thing to it. Tough head's got a higher MA. It's longer. It's thinner um, or skinnier profile. It is designed to penetrate. The thing about the tough head, again, uh, as all tough heads, it comes razor sharp out of the pack. This thing is ready to hunt. I mean, it will cut you. See that cut on my thumb right there? That's from a tough head. Uh, made in the USA. Lifetime warranty. Carbon steel. You see the the bevel's not quite as wide as on the 300, but the, again, the benefit of the tough head over these other broadheads, the ferrule is wider and will fit over the end of your shaft, and I will show that compared to a Grizzly. Uh, and this is, it's again, coated, a lifetime warranty, got the Tonto tip, a real wide Tonto tip here, and it's made in the USA. Uh, these are, I think, 17, between 17 and $18 a head. So very economical head, again, it comes sharp out of the pack, made in the USA. A true test of any broadhead, in my opinion, is will it shave after it goes to an animal? Uh, and I can get grizzlies as sharp or sharper than any other head I've ever tried to sharpen. And they will shave after going through an animal. So that's that. Now I'm going to show you these things mounted. Just for comparison's sake, there's a 160 grain grizzly right there that I put through a deer this year. Compared to 160 grain uh, meathead or cutthroat. There's a 160 grain grizzly right there mounted compared to a 160 grain uh, cutthroat. You can see the cutthroat is a little bit lower MA than the original grizzly, um, but it's probably a lot thicker 
and it's the one piece one piece well this this bride here has been through i don't know how many animals a couple and it's still all i got to do is hit it on the kme and it will be ready to go again but anyway i want to show you this to show you you see the footer the footer here and then this is this is the setup basically without the broad head on it so that's an aluminum footer and then a, a glue and glue on adapter with the broad head mounted flush with the footer that is the grizzly now let's see what the cutthroat would look like mounted Again, i'm not going to mount them but you see okay there's the difference you see the the ferrule that's as far on as i could push that you see how far the, the broad head goes down um the ferrule uh, diameter uh, stops at the uh, edge of the of the adapter, which is fine, um, which is fine, and they're designed to do that. Uh, so that's the that's the cutthroat mounted. Here's the Kodiak. Here's the Kodiak mounted. You see exact same spot. That's where it stops, right? Uh, that's the Kodiak mounted. Now here's the beauty of Tough Head. This is a benefit of Tough Head. Why I like Tough Head. Watch this. It is mounted. It slides down over the the end of the the shaft and encompasses the footing so not only does that give you extra strength it also gives you uh, extra penetration ability because the one of the factors one of the aspie factors of penetration is your uh, broadhead diameter to your shaft diameter so you could as you can see there that is going to clear the way if you will for your shaft to penetrate as it steps down that is a great uh, feature and design from Tough Head, and you could see the uh, the 300 the same. So that's how those mount up. So uh, point Tough Head there. Uh, so you, you get the idea. Again, I'll mount the Grizzly up. You can see where it stops, and the Tough Head would stop right there. Uh, one last thing to look at. Obviously, the 300 is going to be much thicker than the 185, right? The 300 versus the 225 Grizzly, much thicker, more stout still. The 300 versus the uh, 160 Cutthroat, Cutthroat's pretty stout. I mean, no doubt about that. Uh, that's gonna, that's a sturdy, tough broadhead. And then the 300 versus the 190, again, that's where you make your weight up at. So that's it for uh, that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the side-by-side -side comparison of what I consider the uh, top of the line broadheads that I will shoot and I'm always looking for you know I only shoot single bevel uh, single bevel heads with high mechanical advantage I try to follow as many of the Ashby factors of penetration as I can um, again I've, I've shot these broadheads exclusively I've shot grizzlies exclusively since 2016 uh, and I'll show you a head this is the head that made me stop shooting double bevel four blade heads. Uh, nothing wrong with this head. I've killed a lot of animals with this head. This is a great head. I could get these magnets super sharp and they leave a wound like you can't imagine. Okay. But when you look at that tip, okay, see that tip? It's a needle point. Look at the profile of this head. It's huge, very low mechanical advantage, okay? Um, even on a heavy arrow, I bounced this broadhead out of a deer. I bounced right off the shoulder of a giant mature buck at 12 steps. Now, I've never seen a buck that big before or since. Um, I should have waited. Uh, it should have let that buck take another step, but I thought I could get it through there. I would have never made the shot. So had I been shooting one of these, or one of these, or one of these, or one of these, would I have got through there? I believe I would have. Uh, but guess what? You know, what if uh, what if birds had machine guns, or worms had machine guns, and birds wouldn't mess with them, right? So we can play that what if game all along. I won't be asking what if anymore. Um, now I'll show you why. The day I stopped asking what if, this is the skull of about 150, that average boar hog. I think it was about 150 pounds. Let's see if I get that lighting a little bit better. And embedded in that boar skull is a 200 grain uh, 
Kodiak Broadhead. Grizzly Kodiak Broadhead. So there you see, if you look real close, if I get the light just right here, you set Broadhead deep down through the skull, bedded into the opposite side, and you could see the brass ace 125 grain gluing glue on adapter sitting there. I shot this boar hog at about, I think seven steps with my longbow. I was in a tripod and he was slight quarter away when I shot. And the, and the arrow, same exact same arrow set up that I had uh, the Magnus on when I bounced the, the arrow off the deer, except different broadheads. So same weight, 675 grains, whatever the 25 plus FOC percentage. But the only difference was that broadhead versus the Magnus four blade. Um, that arrow hit that hog. The arrow stayed intact. The knock, I, I believe, shot out of the end of the arrow and the hog laid down and, uh, he wasn't quite dead, but he was not going anywhere. I was able to put another one in his lungs and, and dispatch him. So that's when I stopped asking what if. Arrow integrity is the number two factor uh, in when it comes to penetration right behind. Uh, actually, that's the number one factor, I believe. Anyway, one or two. Um, so that's the day I stopped asking if. And that was... I believe that was after I wounded that deer and bounced that arrow off of it when I went straight to uh, Grizzlies full time. So that's why I shoot what I shoot. Uh, and then when you hit him in the head like that, the blood trail was horrible. But he went maybe zero feet. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you got any questions, let me know. Uh, bow hunt more. Peace out.